Praise Jesus, praise the Lord, hallelujah. I remember one time I was walking down the street here in Kiev, Ukraine, where I'm coming to you from. And one little guy was walking with his mother. And he said, Mama, Mama, look, hallelujah is coming. They thought my name was hallelujah. Actually, I'm Pastor Henry Madawa, and I'm coming to you in the name of Jesus, and this is the voice of victory. Well, the reason why the young man, the young boy rather, thought my name was hallelujah, was that I always said hallelujah at the beginning of our program. Well, hallelujah means praise the Lord. So why do we praise the Lord so much? Well, because he is Lord, because he's king. He saved us. He washed us. He made us whole. But one other reason why I always thank the Lord is he uses me in life. Do you know that God wants to work with people? When God begins, begins to work with you, he changes your life. He empowers you. I used to think it's for special someones. Now I realize God wants to use everybody and anybody. I want to speak to you today about the person that God uses. You know, God, we need God. He needs us. If he doesn't answer our prayers, we are doomed. But if we don't say yes to his commands, he can do what he wants to do on earth. So God needs us and we need God. We are partners together with God and he wants to use you. Let's listen to this message. A person used by God. Being born from God, we must crucially have an inner and high desire for God to use us. The Bible says in the second book of Chronicles, chapter 16, verse 9, for the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. You see, God wanted to help this king, but the interesting thing is that this king was won over by the devil. His name is Asa. We'll read about it in detail later. In this you have done foolishly, therefore from now on you shall have wars. So this king Asa had a choice, and God told him, make the right choice and move the right way and I will help you. He moved rightly at first, but on the way he decided it is not necessary to do it this way. He thought it was a minor thing and God won't pay attention nothing of the kind, God paid attention. And as a result, God said, because of this, from now on, you'll have additional wars that you weren't supposed to have, you'll have other headaches that you weren't supposed to have, and you have torment that you didn't consider because you made the wrong decision to move in the wrong direction. Please note, First Peter 5, verse 8. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Resist him steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brotherhood in the word. So all believers face similar issues when the devil tries to win you over. All believers, all brothers, everyone on the earth. When a person says, the devil never tempts me in this, it means it already happened, the devil tempted him or her, that person gave away, and now that person is trying to cover it. In fact, everyone faces it. And it is not even new news. The devil has been doing it for thousands of years, and we need to resist him. Why? Because no matter what the devil promises to you, it is his method to devour you. That's why we need to resist him and not give any place to the devil. We shouldn't allow the devil to win us over. We want to serve God and be ready for God to move and accomplish his work through us. Say Amen. The question arises, Pastor Henry, what are the main qualities of the person used by God? I like a person by the name of Caleb. He is a hero to me. In many cases, he manifested qualities that I consider essential. Joshua chapter 14, verses 6 through 14. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal. 
and Caleb, the son of Jephune, the Kinezite, said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God concerning you and me in Kadesh Barney. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barney to spy out the land. I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the hearts of the people melt. But I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on the day, saying, Surely the land where you foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, as he said these forty-five years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am, this day 85 years old, as yet I am as strong this day as on the day that Moses sent me. Just as my strength was then, so now is my strength for war, both for going out and for coming in. Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord has spoken in that day, for you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out, as the Lord said. Here we see several qualities. The first quality is his full trust in God. Caleb said, Do you remember what God had promised? Do you remember he said the word to you and me? Do you remember what he spoke through Moses? Do you remember it? Please note, Caleb's attitude, he fully trusts the Lord. He respects the word of God because it is not like some literature for him. If God has spoken, he meant it. If you want to be a person that God moves through and a person that God uses the next year and the following 10 years, then learn how to trust the Lord, trust His Word, and respect the Word of the Lord spoken to you. Surprisingly, that many words spoken by Joshua were the same words spoken by God to Moses. Moses had heard it from God and he repeated it. He just said, Caleb, you did great. You held on to the word of God. You will conquer that land. It was the same as Pastor Henry saw you and said, you did great, may God bless you. These were the words of Moses. But amazingly, Caleb treats the words of Moses as the words of God through him. God promised, so I trust these promises and act according to these promises and I will conquer the land. The exciting thing is that God gave him this land. The question arises, who defined what land Caleb will get? Caleb did. No. First God did, and then Caleb did. God promised, but if Caleb didn't go there, God couldn't have given it to him. God can't provide you with something because you only sit at home and pray. Yes, you should pray. And as soon as you've heard God's voice, you ought to pull up your sleeves and start doing it. Let's come back to Caleb. Secondly, Caleb not only fully trusted the Lord, but he was faithful. Say faithfulness. Despite the response of other people, in spite of other people's behavior, you know, it is very difficult to be in a crowd. And that's why we read in the Bible, when Paul wrote to Timothy, do not entangle yourself with the affairs of this life. It also means that do not entangle yourself with certain people. Why? Because when you are related to certain people, they're becoming close to your heart. As soon as they start doing something wrong, it impacts you. You may think you're missing something. They do it and you aren't doing it, it impacts you. If these people are strangers to you, you won't be influenced by what they're doing. Do you understand? But if they are not strangers to you, if they do something, it will affect you. 
One of the most important things that God does before He promotes you in life, He teaches you how to cut the wrong people from yourself. Because if you don't know how to cut people from you, everything they are doing will appear before you at the wrong moment and confuse you. I'm excited. There are 12 main people in Israel. Ten among them went against what God said. Caleb is faithful to God. And despite the pressures of his friends, he still devoted to God. This is called faithfulness. Faithfulness is there even when your company leaves you. Faithfulness is the quality that distinguishes you from the crowd. When there are a lot of us, it is also an examination for all of us, and just a few of us may endure it. But the crowd shall stay at the same place and level. Whenever God brought you into a situation or allowed circumstances where faithfulness was required from you, it was the moment of separating you from the crowd. Or maybe the opposite happened and brought you back to the crowd. Moreover, it doesn't matter if you pray a lot and loudly, no. It is a matter of faithfulness. God will check it on your way whether you are faithful or not. When you show your faithfulness, you come out of the crowd and not only you, someone else will be there with you, but you'll be a minority. There will be less of you than the crowd while the crowd continues to have fun in their cage. God can give a chance to every other person in that crowd when they can show their faithfulness and leave the crowd. Unfortunately, many people are called for great things, but they can't come out of the crowd's carriage. Caleb was faithful, and faithfulness will help you overcome the crowd to become a person God can use. Faithfulness is expressed by steadiness and stability, no matter what circumstances are. If you have trouble at home, you are still steady and stable. Everything is good at home, great, go on. If everything is terrible at home, continue as nothing happens. If it is more than terrible at home, still continue and go on and hold on no matter what. The third quality is dedication. Caleb did everything with his whole heart. It is the person God can use. Commitment is to do with all your heart and soul. It is when I do it faithfully and rightly, even if I can lose something for this reason or be deprived of something. The question is, how to keep yourself available to God? 2 Timothy 2 verses 20-26 but in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and silver, but also of wood and clay, some for honor and some for dishonor. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified and useful for the Master, prepared for every good work. Say prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of pure heart, so be friends to all believers. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. If you see the strife is about to begin, then say, thank you, bless you, goodbye. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be gentle to all able to teach patience, who leaves a bad company while everything is still all right. In humility, correct those who are opposition, if God perhaps will grant them repentance. So if they are in a position, it doesn't mean you should correct them, you should, but in humility. If they call you names, continue to correct them in humility, but if they still don't listen to you, then step aside, and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. Please note, the qualities you should have to keep yourself available to God. 
No, it says there are various vessels in the house for use. These vessels are sought after whenever necessary. There are four types of vessels, golden, silver, wooden, and clay. They all are in the same house. When there are any essential acts, the golden or silver vessels are taken. When simple or not important deeds are to be done, wooden and clay vessels are taken. Sometimes those wooden and clay vessels are not needed anywhere. Sometimes they are ignored because they are not suitable for great deeds. But what is good here is that such a person, based upon this verse, can promote himself from clay, wood, and move to more available vessels. So I can turn from clay into silver, or from wood into gold. A person can do it. Then God can use you more and more often and for more honorable acts. That's why it says here, Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, Meaning, when you cleanse yourself from the dirt that it is in your life and from everything that made your life dirty, that is, from the kingdom of darkness, at the level of your thoughts and mentality, at the level of the words and actions, as soon as these things leave your life, then you are transforming into silver and golden vessels. No matter how often you shout at a church service, no matter how loudly you sing, the most important thing is to be clean from the dirt. God is a holy God. He can't allow himself into the hands of a dirty vessel. He can't. So a person can change himself and look what it says. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself, so who is the one who makes the decision to be cleansed? I do. Who notices these dirty things? I do. Who admits them? I do. Who makes a decision to get rid of them? I do. God will help you as soon as he sees that you are inclinable to changes. He will help you because God is our loving Father. So it turns out that as soon as a person gets rid of that dirt and expresses maturity, he can become a vessel of honor. Uncleanliness requires not only repentance, Lord, I'm sorry, Lord, I'm sorry, no. When it says to cleanse himself, it means to repent and to leave that uncleanliness. Then the impact of dirtiness leaves you as well, and then you are cleansed from all the dirt. If we manifest maturity, then we can become a vessel of honor. God wants to move through us. Well, praise the Lord. You know, when I realized that I'm a partner with God, He actually gave, him, gave us, me and you, authority. He said, you shall receive power and be my witnesses. In other words, if you shout, shut your mouth, you don't say anything, there's no witnessing. And the name of the Lord is not praised around the world. You know, He depends on you doing something. So many years ago, when we started the Victory Church, the church was growing smaller and smaller and smaller. You know, I normally joke that we grew from 200 to 30. We lost minus 107. We gained minus 170 people. In other words, we lost 170. And I was in a desperate situation. I said, Lord, what do I do? And he said, pray for the sick. I couldn't believe it. Me praying for the sick? I was so afraid. But I, I said, okay. So I came to the church, the little small group, that 30 people who had stayed. So I said, we are going to pray for the sick. Bring the sick. But they were so disobedient, they did not bring the sick. They brought the dying. <laughs> and I remember a lady died in the service. And praise the Lord, she was resurrected in that particular service. Let's watch these testimonies. 
they are the proof of the power of God through us. Let's watch. He knows the emptiness of your heart. And tonight, He has come to rescue you, to help you, to heal you, to deliver you. Receive from Jesus. Pain. Jesus loves the wrestlers. Yes. This man could not walk for two years properly uh, my body's pain. and his body was uh, in pain properly. for the last two years. For the last and two years. So I am coming in the Jinnah you know, hospital in the by walk. So not come on, I am have to the, without bike. Okay. You had pain yeah, for yes, the last the two years. This is the pain of the body that is in the middle of the body. But when the prayer was given, the Lord has given the pain in the middle of the body. What did the doctors call the disease? The doctor is not understand so is what happens no. in the trouble. Doctors could not understand. Not understand. So two years I am eating in the medicine. Ah. It's not perfect in the body. They say that for two years, दुआई इस्तेमाल कर रहे थे लेकिन उन्हें कोई फायदा नहीं हो रहा था लेकिन अब दुआ के वसीले से खुदावन ने इन्हें शिफा दी है। But Jesus can understand. Yes. God bless you. This lady was demon possessed for five years. She couldn't sleep at all. And yesterday night when you prayed, she felt something good coming to her. And this night was the first night she slept well like a baby. Hello, Mama. You couldn't, you could not sleep. क्या हुआ था? मुझे मैं पांच साल से बदरुहों की कैद में गिरी थी और मुझे रात को नींद नहीं आती थी। For five years. Five years. The demons had possessed her and tormented her, and she could not sleep. She couldn't sleep. Last night she was delivered, and after five years, it was the first night that she slept peacefully. Like a baby. ज़्यादातर मुझे रात को ही तंग करती थी, मुझे नींद नहीं आती थी। They used to torment me in the night time। दिल की धड़कन मेरी तेज़ हो जाती थी, सांस लेने में मुश्किल होती थी। I even felt hard to breathe। लेकिन कल मैं आई थी, कल यहाँ से होके गई हूँ तो पूरी रात मैं सही सोई। The Lord delivered me and I slept peacefully। God bless you, Hallelujah। This man had a kidney stone in his left kidney he and he was in pain when he came. Okay. And now the stone has gone and he's pain free. Can you translate that for them? Ye naujwaan hai jiske gurde mein patri thi aur wo dard ke saath is ibadat mein dua ke liye aaya tha. Lekin jab dua ki gayi hai aur wo dard bhi gaib ho gayi hai aur wo patri bhi kehte hai gaib ho gayi hai. So where was the pain? Kaha par thi dard kaha ho rahi thi aap? And you don't feel the pain anymore? Was it here? Yes. And here. Okay. Yes. No pain. No pain. No pain. No pain. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Every time we hold a Jesus festival, we gain thousands of people for the kingdom of God. It has become possible because of the sacrifice of the partners of Christ for All Cities Ministries. When you become a partner or make a one-time financial contribution, you participate in the Lord's work. We thank each partner of Christ for All Cities Ministries and those who have once contributed finances to make the holding of Jesus festivals possible. If you would like to support the ministry of Pastor Henry Madava, you can do that through prayer and a financial contribution. 
and become a co-worker in the great work of the Lord. If you want to be a partner with us or to help the voice of victory to be on the air, or you want to be part of our worldwide ministry, then please send your offerings to the address on the screen or go to our website. Well, praise the Lord. Jesus is Lord. He's so wonderful. You know, if he can do it through me, he can do it through you. Because he's no respect of persons. He loves all of us the same. If he can open to you, he can work through you. Now I want to pray with you. There are two kinds of prayers I want to do for you. Number one, if you don't know Jesus, I want to pray with you. And number two, I want to pray that God will use you, move through you, work miracles, signs, and wonders in your life life. Let's pray. If you want Jesus in your heart, say with me, Heavenly Father, I come to you. Forgive me of all my sins and give me new life. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and be my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer sincerely, your sins are forgiven. You are a new creature. Now, I want to pray for you that God may use you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray let your anointing fall on your people. Let your dominion, dominion dominating power and authority come upon them. Let a strong faith and expectation be a life in them. And I pray that you move mightily through them to your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. It was such a wonderful thing to be with you today. We love you. Stay strong. Jesus loves you. Mm -hmm.